Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com. Welcome right into this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial where today we're going to take a look at this swiping arrow transition that just shoots right across the screen and uh, you can, well, transition from one scene to another very easily with this tutorial. We're going to cover it all right here and right now. If you do enjoy this video, well, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss any video editing tutorials, past, present, or future. Let's jump right into Premiere Pro and check this thing out. Well, here we are in Premiere Pro once again, as we often find ourselves. I'll drag a pair of video clips out from my project bin onto my timeline and adjust the cut between these clips a little bit just to get them lined up the way I want them to be. Next, I'll grab the rectangle tool and hold down the shift key and drag out a perfect square shape that's about the vertical size of the frame here. And then I'm going to go window, central graphics, and I'm going to choose the fill option first and give it the color using the hex code here, the color of FF9728. This is just so I can see the shape and make sure there's no stroke or shadow on the shape. We don't want any of that stuff, just a fill. I'll also use the rotation option here and I'll rock this thing over to about 45 degrees and I'll use the alignment tools in this essential graphics panel to center this up vertically and horizontally as well. Next, I'm going to shift the shape off stage all the way over to the right by dragging the X input under the position parameter within the transform options in the shape in the effect controls panel. Yikes, that's a mouthful. I'll activate the animation here by clicking on the stopwatch icon. It also drops a keyframe there. This is going to kick off the animation for this shape. Slide the playhead across to the end of the graphic object, or maybe near the end of the graphic object, and then adjust the X input. Drag it all the way so that this shape passes across the frame, just like I do here. Now, select both of these keyframes over in the animation timeline, and right-click and choose Auto Bezier for the easing options here on the animation. I'm going to hit the little twirl down arrow to the left of the position word to open kind of the more advanced easing options. And I'll just adjust the easing kind of... Uh, kind of a little bit like this. So we get a, a lot of animation right at the beginning, like a lot happens, and then it just kind of slowly fades across the rest of the way. That's what I'm doing here. After I do that, I'm going to drag both keyframes just to the very edges of the graphic object in the animation timeline as well, just to make sure that the animation begins the very moment that the graphic appears, and the animation continues through all the way until the graphic disappears. After I've done that, hold down the Alter Option key and drag the graphic up to the track above this. It's going to duplicate it, and then I'm going to move it down the timeline by three frames by holding down Command or Control and using the right arrow key uh, while I have that top track selected. I'm also going to change the color of this new graphic shape. I'm going to change the fill to FFFFFF, which is just solid white. Now, something cool is happening here because as we duplicate this shape, We've also duplicated the animation, all those keyframes, the easing, all that stuff that we just did. So we don't have to go and redo that again. It's really pretty awesome. I'm going to duplicate the track again by just alt dragging it up. I'm going to move it six frames down the timeline. Again, hold down Commander Control and tap that right arrow key six times. And I'm going to change the fill color here to 55057D. Now I'll duplicate that newest track again. I'm going to move this one only two frames down the timeline. And here I'm going to change the fill to b 0 b 5 FF. Then I'll duplicate the newest track again, and I'm going to move it another four frames down the timeline, and I'm going to change this fill to FF226C. Now, finally, we'll duplicate it one last time. I'm going to move it another six frames down the timeline, and I'm going to change this fill color to FFFF6B. Next, I'll select this top track right there on my timeline. I'm going to right-click on it and choose Copy, just to copy this graphic shape. Then I'm going to select all of these tracks of graphics that we just made. I'm going to right click on them and choose to nest them. This is going to group them together and I'll give this nested group or this nested sequence the name triangles. Now I'm going to move my playhead back to the beginning of the timeline and make sure that I am not targeting any tracks on or below the track that's holding our new nested sequence. You can see I'm shutting off the targeting by hitting those little, the, the, the little boxes that are turning from blue to just gray. So I'm shutting that off and then I'm going to go edit paste and I'll drag the graphic object to the end of this nested sequence. So it's on the track above the nested sequence. I'm going to drag it to the end and because I have snapping turned on it's going to click right into place. Then I'm going to trim the front of this clip back. I'm going to trim it out, if you will, and so it covers the entire nested sequence. So I can just hover over the beginning of the graphic object when I see the red arrow, just pull it back to the left to extend that out. Don't worry, I'm not messing with the animation or anything. Everything is perfectly as it should be. And now if I play this clip, 
I'm going to see that there's no difference because all I have is this green yellow square exactly animated over the lower green yellow square. So of course I see no difference to make this a little easier. I'm going to change the fill color for this new shape to solid black um, right here. As I said on this newly pasted shape, now we can see the position of this graphic, but I want to change the position of this graphic so that some of that green yellow shape is showing because now this black square is just covering up the entire old green yellow shape. To do this, I am going to look to the effect controls panel and I'm going to use the next previous arrows to select the very first keyframe and I'm going to change the X input to, in this case, I'll shift it to around 3750 being the point where this animation will start. So it starts from back further to reveal a bit of the green yellow shape, but still travel with kind of this big group of triangular square angled shapes, whatever you want to call them. I can scrub through the animation here and see what I got. I think it looks pretty good. It looks a little weird maybe, but here's where it gets better. I'm going to go to the effects panel and I am going to search for the effect called track matte key. I'm going to drag it and drop it on the nested sequence. And then in my effect controls panel here, I'm going to set the mat to the track that contains the black graphic that we just adjusted. And then I'm going to tick on reverse to use this animated shape to cut out the area that it covers on that nested sequence. You can see what this does. Really, really cool. Next, I'm going to select both of these layers and choose to nest them as a group. And I'm going to give this the name colored hyphen angle hyphen transition, uh, let's say hyphen effect. Then I'll right click this nested sequence and I'm going to choose to speed it up 400% to make it just fly right by. And then in order to get this lined up over the cut on our video clip so it works, we want to move our playhead to the cut in our video clips. And then I'm going to select the nested sequence and hold down my commander control key and use my arrow keys to just nudge the sequence back and forth until the transition takes place in such a way to conceal just the very specific frame where the video change happens. When all these triangles are covering up the entire video right there on that frame, boom, the transition should take place. So that is pretty much how to make this transition effect happen. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a thing or two. Again, make sure if you enjoyed the video to subscribe to my channel so you never miss any video editing tutorials in the future. And if you're into Discord, we just started a Discord server, chat room, whatever you call it. I'm brand new to Discord, so I don't have all the terminology down pat quite yet. But there'll be a link right down there in the bio for this video. You can come over, join us, check it out. We're going to have a bunch of fun over there, build a nice little community, um, and do all kinds of cool stuff over there. I don't quite even know everything that we're going to do, but it's going to be a popping thing if I have anything to do with it. Um, so we'll make it cool. We'll make it a, a whole bunch of fun. So for working with shapes and animation and keyframes and easing and everything else we talk about in this video tutorial, guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.